I just finished my first year studying at Oxford University. Let's take a look back at how it all went. My name is Sam, and this is Oxcentric. For those who are new to the channel, a brief bit of background. I'm going into the second year of my undergraduate degree, and I'm reading engineering science at University College, a college famous for its ability to confuse people in casual conversation. Oh, nice. Uh, didn't know you were at Oxford. Which college do you go to? University. Sorry. Which college? University College. Oh, right. Uh, I thought the only university college was in London. Right, I'm gonna kill you! So before I start discussing exact details, here's a brief summary of how my first year went. I spent my first term from early October to early December in Oxford. I'd highly recommend checking out my first term in review video if you want to hear the full story about this. I go a lot more in depth about the transition from sixth form to university, as well as what it was like living in Oxford in that uneasy time between lockdowns. England spent January 2021 in another full national lockdown. This meant that I spent my entire second term at Oxford studying from home. In April 2021, despite a very confused national policy regarding students returning to university, I was able to come back to UNIV and start to get a little bit of normality back in my life. Throughout the term, social distancing restrictions gradually reduced until right at the end where unfortunately a sudden outbreak of COVID cases amongst Oxford colleges meant that quite a few events were ultimately postponed or cancelled. I also sat my first year exams at the end of this term, so stick around till the end of the video if you want to hear about those. In the spirit of tradition, like in my first term in review video, I'm going to be breaking this one down into the good, the bad and the ugly, albeit a little more loosely this time. Without further ado, let's get started. Part 1. The Good The first thing I want to talk about in the good category is probably what I consider the peak of my time at Oxford so far. That is the three weeks of glorious summer freedom that I had after my exams had finished. As I mentioned in my Oxford summer bucket list video, having a significant amount of free time with no work and no deadlines in Oxford is really quite uncommon due to how the academic year is structured. Therefore, it meant that my free time post exams was even more precious and even more fun. From drinking pims in university parks, to discovering that I was actually pretty bad at punting, to lazing away the afternoons, sunbathing on the Radcliffe quad lawns, I had a fantastic time. Arguably, this deserves to be the first thing I mentioned in the good category, and that is the people that I've met at Oxford University. At the end of my first term at Oxford, in no small part due to the stringent social distancing restrictions, I wasn't quite settled socially, and hadn't entirely found a group of friends who I knew I was going to stick with. During my third term, I had a lot more time to spend with friends and interact in person, so I'm glad to say that I now have a much more solid group of friends who I am really enjoying spending time with. In Freshers' Week particularly, there's so much pressure to instantly find the people who you click with, when that's not going to be the case for the vast majority of students. So don't be afraid to just take it slow and find the people who you really enjoy being with. Now, call me sentimental, but when I walk down High Street and I see Univ, it really does feel like home. Picking a college can feel like a daunting task, however, I think that Univ was the ideal college for me. It's able to embrace tradition while still remaining unpretentious. It has the central location and beautiful architecture, yet still feels homely, and it just has the right vibe. Particularly, I was very sad to leave behind my beautiful room in the Radcliffe Quad Tower, which is the coolest space I have ever lived in. One of my biggest accomplishments in the last year, and hence featuring in the good category, was winning the JCR or Junior Common Room Presidency. Whilst engineering is what I study, I've long had a keen interest in politics, and the JCR presidency allows me to indulge this, whilst making a genuinely positive impact upon my college community. I know it's going to make my next year at Oxford hellishly busy, and that will probably affect how frequently I make content for the Oxcentric channel, but it's an opportunity that I would not have passed up, and I think it has been totally worthwhile so far. For me as president, as well as the rest of my team, organising Freshers Week has been a huge responsibility, but we're really excited and can't wait to see how students respond. This next thing is kind of cheating since it was over the summer holidays, but I think we should count it. 
Oxford gives you access to some fantastic extracurricular opportunities. For example, this summer we arranged an impromptu Univ Chapel Choir tour to Canterbury, where we sang Evensong in the Canterbury Cathedral for three nights and generally had a really good time. Part of what made it so special was that so much of what we did would have been inconceivable a few months prior. For example, even singing with an audience in the same room as you had really not been a common experience for me in 2021 until that point. Next year, our choir touring will hopefully be going international again, so fingers crossed that that comes off. On a similar note of opportunities, I've had the chance to do some very exciting outreach work with Oxford over the last year. In particular, I've really liked doing the Oxplore book club live events, one of which involved me interviewing an author live on Zoom for a large audience of young, enthusiastic readers, which is something that I had never done before. The last thing I want to file in the good category is my course. Now, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with my course. On the one hand, I couldn't see myself studying anything else at university, and I think it was the right choice for me. That said, some days I look at my problem sheets and my brain just turns to soup. At the end of this year, I have to choose what I wish to specialise in, which is doubtless a bit of an intimidating decision, but I still have time to think and plenty more content to study. That said, I do consider engineering very rewarding and absolutely worthwhile if you're willing to put the effort in. Part 2. The bad. Just for context, the bad category is for things that I found mildly annoying but were definitely not deal breakers when it came to my Oxford experience. The first and biggest thing I want to put in this category was my experience with the college room ballot this year. As a bit of background information, a lot of Oxford University students live in accommodation owned by their college. There's a few reasons for this, but primarily it is cheaper, usually better value, and often less hassle to arrange than private rent. Many colleges will also offer accommodation for the full course of an Oxford undergraduate degree, and my college Univ is amongst them. At my college, each year on the ballot, students have a randomly allocated position. This means that if they get towards the top, then they will have a pick of nearly any room that they want amongst the available choice, but if they are at the bottom, they will more or less just be picking whatever remains. That said, usually each year there's a few students who aren't on the ballot and need rooms with specific features. For example, music students or choral scholars might need a room with a piano, or disabled students might need a room with specific access requirements. Arguably, having a fully random ballot and rooms that all cost the same to rent is definitely preferable on access terms, because it means that nobody is going to be priced out of the nicer rooms. So I do very much respect the system for that. That said, a random ballot every single year will lead to more variable outcomes than other methods. For example, doing it random one year, then flipping that upside down so the students who are at the bottom get the top pick the next year. In second year, you tend to ballot in a group with several friends. My group really did not do well with our ballot position, we got 40th out of 42, which unfortunately means that we're living at a different annex to the vast majority of other students in my year. Admittedly, me and my friends have worked together to try and build a little bit of a student community at this alternative annex, so I'm quite looking forward to spending a lot of time with them. That said, it is a bit of a disappointment to be quite a bit further away from both the department and a large amount of other students in my year. Though I'm going to talk about it a little later, I am going to put my exam results in this category just because I had some mixed feelings about them. Part 3. The Ugly The ugly is things that I really just did not enjoy about my first year in Oxford. Some of them are things that could be changed, others were just villains of circumstance. The first thing I want to talk about is toxic standards. Now I feel the need to preface this by saying that in general, pushing yourself to perform better academically to a reasonable extent is far from a bad thing and can definitely help you to produce better results. That said, when you have external forces pushing you harder than you need to be pushed, that's where things can start to become stressful and it starts to become a detriment. At Oxford, students can often feel under pressure not to pursue certain extracurricular activities that their tutors perceive as too much work. The classic one for this is rowing, because it is a large time commitment, involves a lot of early starts, but this does go more widely for other things. The pressure I come across the most is pressure to get a first, 
and it's almost like everyone in my cohort is expected to be getting a first, despite the fact that that is statistically very unlikely nigh on impossible. This results focus is worsened by the inequality that comes from what happens before Oxford. For example, a student at a private school, where a lot of students go to Oxbridge, may have had a chance to prepare and start interacting with some of the concepts that we deal with in our first year syllabus. Whereas me, at an average state comp in the north of England, has not really had those same chances. And that's not even to mention the effect on the mental health of students. It's a lot of pressure to feel under, and especially if you just can't achieve those results, it really starts to wear you down and affect your self-esteem. Now, of course, this is something that will take time and shifts in culture to change. In particular, it relies on tutors, giving their students a bit more freedom to follow extracurricular activities that they are interested by, but also a general recognition that someone does not necessarily have to be the most academic in their cohort, which is already, might I add, very intelligent people, to still go on and achieve amazing things. In conclusion, I think less emphasis should be placed on obtaining a first, and more emphasis should be placed on helping students develop and be more well-rounded. The second thing I put in the ugly was the circumstantial problem of a term spent at home. I found this really tough, despite the fact that I still had a good workspace at home and a family willing to accommodate my studying. At this point, I was still settling into Oxford. The academic work I was finding really pretty tricky. In particular, going through this at home, I didn't get the same sense of camaraderie that you get in a normal Oxford term. Everyone is really busy and everyone has a lot of work to get done. And I think that does help to make things easier in some senses. I think this was worsened by the fact that some Oxford students had come back to the city and were generally taking more liberal views when it came to lockdown restrictions. The only thing worse than loneliness is loneliness with a side order of fear of missing out. Probably my worst day at Oxford so far was in the first week of that second term. I was miserable, I was at home, it was dark and rainy, and my academic work was going terribly. And I thought, how am I meant to get through a whole term of this? I got through it in the end, but compared to my first and especially my third terms at Oxford so far, my second was just a joyless experience. So, that's the heavy stuff over and done with. Let's talk reports. Part 4. Reports. On to my reports. I mostly include these so you folks at home get an idea of the kind of feedback that you might receive as an Oxford student. No, it is not just to inflate my already overly large ego. During my final term, most of my reports centred on what grades I got in my mock exams, which is not the most exciting thing to talk about. That said, in my second term, I did get some feedback that focused on how I was performing academically, so that's what I'm going to talk about now. All submitted work was to a high standard, with good interaction in tutorials and sensible questions on the material. In later tutorials, some answers were a little simplistic, suggesting need for greater depth of understanding. Overall, a good term. On a general engineering course, it is inevitable that you will find topics that you are not really as comfortable and confident studying. For me, thermodynamics was one of those. That said, I have been working quite hard at it and I think I've seen some results. In my end of year exams, thermodynamics was not my weakest paper in the end, which is very much not something I expected. Next is from my structures tutor. Sam is quick to answer questions and seems to be developing a sound foundation in the subject. With the pace of a new material and the need to master new techniques, he's finding that success requires an in-depth knowledge and practice. The tutorial questions are there to assist him in determining whether or not he understands the principles, but he needs to be able to apply them to exam questions that need a thoughtful approach. Studying at Oxford, the material really does come thick and fast, so my tutor is entirely right that practice is absolutely a necessity to achieve good results. Throughout my second term, my focus did shift from really enjoying what I was doing to just getting through the week, and that probably was clear in my work. Overall, this feedback was entirely reasonable, and things that I did work on in my third term. And finally, let's talk about my results. Just a warning, this is going to be some real first world problems. I was pretty happy with my numerical results, all in all. I averaged around 77%, with two of my papers going over 80%, which I was really pleased with. 
Traditionally, passing with distinction is the equivalent of a first, and usually if you get above 70%. Because I sat my exams virtually an open book, this meant that people on average performed better. Therefore, the threshold for pass with distinction was raised to more like 79%. My first year results don't count towards my final degree grade overall, so the stakes could have definitely been higher. That said, it would have been really lovely to get that distinction. Part 5. Conclusion Despite that bittersweet ending, I really have enjoyed my first year at Oxford. At the time of filming, I procrastinated making this video for so long that I physically could not procrastinate it any longer. I'm going back to Oxford in just a couple of days, and I'm really excited for it. At the time this video going up, we've just recently surpassed 2,000 subscribers on the channel. Another big milestone, so I'd like to thank you all so much for your continued support. In the meanwhile, thanks for watching, and I'll see you around. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content. The Eccentric YouTube channel is now an IKEA Shark stan account.